This time on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm excited about this new concept you have. I love it. Really, I want to invite lots of friends to come back. It's OBC Kitchen, which pays tribute to all things Kentucky with food and drink. And a historic building in downtown Louisville is reborn with a new mission. We'll go inside the kitchen with the head chef at DECA, who's reinventing fine dining with fresh local foods. It's all right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Welcome to another edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Tim Laird in Lexington, this time at the OBC Kitchen. OBC is named after Old Bourbon County, the mark that distillers stamped on their whiskey barrels before floating them down the Mississippi from Kentucky. Nowadays, OBC is not only the mark of fine whiskey, but also a mark of fine food. That is incredible. It's fantastic. I'll be back. This is wonderful. We'll sample some of OBC's signature dishes coming up. And we'll go into the kitchen with the executive chef to see how to make some of these southern masterpieces at home. Another new secret. Looking forward to that, Tim. And we'll also drop in on one of Louisville's top chefs. We'll go into the kitchen at DECA, where Annie Petrie is using fresh, seasonal Kentucky ingredients to create one-of-a-kind dishes like this. Secrets to rolling cavatelli. It's pasta that's made from scratch using a very old school technique. Here with me, it's a little squeaky. The secrets to that coming up. But first, we begin in Lexington at OBC, where we find Tim Lair. Tim? I'm back in the kitchen with Chef Matt Combs, who knows his way around the kitchen. How are you, Chef? Doing great, sir. How are you? Good to see you again. I'm excited about this new concept you have, the OBC Kitchen. The food at OBC is sort of Southern Fusion. It reminds you of the meals your mom used to make with some new world twists. I grew up with a uh, grandma and a mom that cooked on a, on a regular basis and, you know, seven days a week and it was always biscuits and it was chicken and waffles. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's all that southern fare. The chicken and waffles here are not your grandma's. Much better than my grandmother's chicken. As crispy as can be. Not your grandmother's chicken and waffles. Looking forward to eating more. We'll get the secrets to those coming up, along with a new way to look at surf and turf. We start with the turf, and then we follow up with the surf. Turf and surf. Turf and surf. Turf and surf at OBC is made with carpaccio and fried oysters. Oh, yeah! And wait until you see what's up first. Well, today we're going to start off with probably the most favorite appetizer that we serve at OBC, which is our short rib tacos. We braise short ribs and cola with uh, Cabernet balsamic and that slow cook for about three and a half hours. Oh no, that's a, that, there's a secret revealed right there. Braised in cola. Yeah, so we're using we're using soda to actually help break down the proteins. And then we just turn those into tacos. We got a nice little kale jicama slaw. We got carrots, bell peppers, jicama, which is gives a nice crunch to the dish. Uh, toss that with just a little bit of a vinaigrette, just to give it some a little bit of acidity to kind of cut through. So jicama, a little Latin ingredient, and also we've got some Kentucky ingredients, which is the kale. So it's kind of a, it's a, a worldly fusion. dish. It's a nice fusion. Yeah, it is. Bringing them all together on one taco. We're going to toast our tortillas. We use uh, four-inch flour tortillas, so they're nice shareable tacos. Really nice. So we're just going to toast these on the flat top just so they get a nice little crisp. Uh, from there, while those are toasting. Do a little quick flip. Quick flip. I see you're using your tongs, Chef. Might I hit? <laughs> It's the asbestos fingers. They don't burn. <laughs> That's right. Once the tortillas are toasted on both sides, it's time to build this signature OBC taco. Build the tacos right on the plate. We'll start with the slaw on the bottom. Make sure we get a little bit of each ingredient on each taco. From there, we'll go ahead and take our braised short rib and we'll just kind of slightly kind of shred it up. And you can see how it just oh, pulls apart. Oh, look at that. That is absolutely perfect. That's kind of the meat of the dish, if yeah. you so to speak. Look at that. Oh. We top that with a horseradish crema. Uh, typically where you have a creme fraiche or, or a sour cream on tacos, since we're using beef, we kind of spiked it with horseradish to give it a little extra pop. We'll use uh, salsa verde. And what's neat about our salsa verde is we actually kick it up by pureeing avocados in as well. So not only just the tomatillos, the avocados give it a nice creaminess. A little pico de gallo. A little pico de gallo to finish it off. 
We'll just garnish with some fresh cilantro sprigs. Very traditional. There it is. It looks like a triple crown winner right there. Indeed. There they are. I'll tell you what, that looks absolutely fabulous, Chef. Do you mind if I taste this so you know I've got to try it a little bit? Absolutely. Okay, yeah, going in. Here we go. Love it. God, everything looks so good. Mmm. Maybe that's the reason it's our number one appetizer. <laughs> triple crown of tacos. And I'm saying this is downtown triple crown. This is awesome. I I gotta go in again. Wow. I like the salt severity that you have that avocado. It's kind of creamy. And I love the little bit of kick that's in the uh, horseradish you yep. have in your crema. This is awesome. I mean, every ingredient is working together, tasting good, and awesome. It's I'll very well what. rounded. Oh, it's just perfect. I mean, this is one of the best tacos I've had. Tender and delicious. The tacos are awesome. They have lots of different flavors. So many colors and so many flavors. Love the uh, salsa verde with the guac, with the avocados, and it's really good. Excellent. Thank you, Chef. Well, thank you. Beef tacos are always a great way to begin at OBC, and so is this. It's what they call turf and surf. Chef, I've heard of uh, surf and turf, but you have turf and surf. So what's the difference? Well, seeing as though we're, we're affiliated with Prime Beef Steakhouses, and, and we serve a lot of prime beef as it is, we kind of got our priorities straight. We start with the turf, and then we follow up with the surf. So traditionally, absolutely the surf and turf would be steak and lobster, but in this case, we're using something completely different. Yeah, we're using a prime beef carpaccio with crisp fried oysters, so it, the, the presentation and the plating of it makes for a great shareable appetizer. Absolutely great. Looking forward to eating more. We're using a prime beef, it's, and you can see with all the marbling that's in, and this is a top butt sirloin. We'll take the loin and we'll roll it tight in plastic, and then we have to freeze it. So once it gets frozen solid, then we can slice through and get super paper thin slices. With the prime rib thinly sliced, the chef moves the focus to the fried oysters. We have our, our oysters that are in a buttermilk brine. Fried chicken in a buttermilk uh, brine is great, but you can do that with the oysters as well. Same thing, the enzymes that, that work with the oyster and helps ensure that you got a nice tender product in the end. Another new secret. We also use our house uh, made seasoned flour and then just toss them in the flour so we can get a nice breading on them. It looks like you want to get a good coating on those all the way around, all right? All right, and then we're just going to move this straight to the fryer. Flash fry those. One thing that you don't want to do is overcook your oyster. These won't take long at all, right? These, these are about some flash fries. Uh, it, it's about a minute in the fryer, and then that just till we get a nice golden crisp on there. All right, that quickly. Perfect. You can actually see the crunch. For the carpaccio part, we're going to start with a salt and pepper blend just to give it a nice seasoned base. Then from there, we're gonna use imported Parmesan Reggiano. Nice little slice, thin slices. We'll drizzle with a garlic Parmesan aioli. And then we'll start finishing the dish just by placing the oysters directly on top. On top of each of those, we go with just a little bit of lemon Tabasco aioli. So the lemon really, wow. really complements the oysters. Excellent. Serve that with the uh, Asiago ciabatta crisp. We got a little Cajun blackened seasoning on there with some with some butter, and then some nice microgreens. Beautiful. I tried the surf and turf. Turf and surf. Turf and surf. I'm sorry. <laughs> turf and surf is amazing. I'm on my second helping. Yeah, oysters are really good. They are wonderful. They're nice and light and crispy. Turf and surf, right here. Indeed. I love it. I like your creation. This is great. Heck with the surf and turf. Go turf and surf right here. Boom. OBC Kitchen. OBC Kitchen. <laughs> We're going to get more secrets from OBC Kitchen in Lexington coming up. But first, a side trip to Louisville's Nulu neighborhood. What's old is new again at DECA. What used to be a homeless shelter is now one of the best restaurants in downtown. And we're going into the kitchen with the head chef next on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is presented by the Kentucky Beef Council. Beef, it's what's for dinner. And the Kentucky Department for Travel and Tourism. Have a seat at our table. We have a lot to be proud of here in the bluegrass. Hardworking people, 
beautiful farms and Kentucky sports. This fall, make your friends and family's tailgate party a celebration of who we are and what makes Kentucky great. From our tailgate to yours. Make every game day win by adding beef to your grill. Visit kybeef.com for tips and delicious recipes that are sure to be a touchdown at your next tailgate. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is presented in part by Cisco Louisville, your source for quality local ingredients. Good things come from Cisco. Welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Tim Laird in Lexington, where local foodies have found a new favorite destination. This is wonderful. That's incredible. That's fantastic. I'll be back. It's OBC Kitchen, named after Old Bourbon County. They're full of fine bourbons here, but also you can get full on fine food as well. Coming up, we'll get the secrets to OBC's chicken and waffles, and I promise you never had them like this before. It tastes like a cheddar biscuit, and it's just delightful. It's delicious. Oh, wow. And I love the bar at OBC, where the cocktail menu always changes with the seasons, and the classics never die. We actually do a pre-prohibition style old fashioned. Uh... We'll make our way to the bar to see how to make an old fashioned, the old fashioned way. Coming up, but right now, let's check in with Kevin Harned in Louisville. Kevin Harned back with you, this time at DECA in Louisville's Nulu District on East Market Street. And here, you get much more than just dinner. It's an experience. Part of the reason that experience is so enjoyable here is that you're in such a beautiful environment. You can be outside next to a fountain or a fire pit or downstairs in the cellar and feel kind of like, you know, wrapped in someone's arms down there. It's very comfortable down there. Or in the dining room with tall ceilings and beautiful art on the walls. It's, it's just a very nice and unique experience no matter where you are in the restaurant. And if you're looking for total privacy, well, there's a room for that too. Perfect for business meetings or proposals of a different type. <laughs> we like to make everyone feel comfortable. It's romantic and vibrant at the same time, both the atmosphere and the food. The atmosphere and the food really elevate each other. Chef Annie Petri is the creator in the kitchen at DECA, and in here, she feels right at home. It's one of those things I've always loved since I was a kid. Proceeded to uh, learn as much as I could and work every day doing it since then. From New York to San Francisco, she's worked her way to Kentucky, and she's brought her own brand of fresh flavors that are prepared to perfection. I've never tasted anything like it at all. People are raving about this pasta, and wait until you see the secrets behind it. Secrets to rolling cavatelli. So here we have some of the cavatelli dough which is made with ricotta cheese, you can make your own. Um, also has Parmesan Reggiano and bread flour, or high gluten flour and water. And then we have this old school cavatelli roller that we found on eBay, that's the secret to the cavatelli. And so we've cut it into strips and we're gonna feed it through the machine. And bear with me, it's a little squeaky. So we just feed it through the grooves and we roll it. And what we end up with are these little ricotta dumplings that look kind of like grubs. Put these on a tray. From here, we're going to blanch them. Now I have some rapidly boiling salted water. I'm going to dump the pasta in there. And when it floats, I'm going to check it. And it should be about done. Before I make the sauce, I've roasted off some shiitake mushrooms, sliced them, and then browned them in butter. So they're nice and uh, caramelized. A few thyme sprigs, some lemon juice, salt. We've got a nice big cube of butter here. Some chiffonade of fresh sage. This butter is gonna melt and start toasting and turn a ni nice brown hazelnut color. I'm gonna go ahead and add some of the mushrooms that I've, I've roasted, just to get them to, to warm up. And when it gets to the place I want, I'm gonna add some lemon juice to stop the browning. Okay, so now it's nice and brown and caramelized. I'm gonna turn the heat off, just so it doesn't flame. You definitely do that at home, so that you don't get a, a flaming reaction from the lemon juice. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of cream. I'm gonna add the dumplings, give it a nice toss. And if it starts to thicken up on you too much, or if the cream starts to break, just add a little bit of the pasta water, pack your plate.
I'm gonna top it off with some breadcrumbs just to give it a nice crunch and texture. These are made from our sourdough focaccia, which we've dried out and then toasted with butter and sliced garlic and salt slowly in a saute pan. This took about an hour. And then to finish, just some fried sage leaves. So we just picked some nice sage leaves and fried them in 350 degree oil for about 10 seconds. And there it is, have a telly. The pasta was delicious. Oh my goodness, it was fabulous. By the way, the building that houses DECA dates back to the 1870s. And what a lot of people may not realize is that it was most recently the Wayside Christian Mission. You'd barely even recognize it now. Stay with us for more Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs as we head back to Lexington for an old-fashioned, made the old-fashioned way, and chicken and waffles like you've never seen before. Definitely not grandmother's chicken and waffles. Not grandma's at all. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is brought to you in part by PNC Bank, for the achiever in you. We have a lot to be proud of here in the bluegrass. Hardworking people, beautiful farms, and Kentucky sports. This fall, make your friends and family's tailgate party a celebration of who we are and what makes Kentucky great. From our tailgate to yours. Make every game day win by adding beef to your grill. Visit kybeef.com for tips and delicious recipes that are sure to be a touchdown at your next tailgate. Welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. This is the show that takes you out to eat at Kentucky's favorite restaurants. And right now, we're headed back to OBC Kitchen in Lexington, and it doesn't get any more Kentucky. The dining room is well appointed with luxurious leather, yet it breathes the history of Kentucky through its tables made from centuries old barn wood. And behind the bar, they mix the cocktails with a nod to the old days as well. For more on that, let's go back to my co-host, America's Chief Entertaining Officer, the CEO, Tim Laird. When you come here, the writing's on the wall. You're gonna find a lot of bourbons and whiskeys. There's a long list of craft beer too, and a gigantic selection of fine wine. Over 140 bottles of wine in the collection. <laughs> That's so. quite a selection, yeah, we got well, a not just bourbons, wines too. Yeah. You've got quite a craft cocktail program here, and it changes through the season. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, we do all new cocktails every three to four months uh, based on what ingredients we can get fresh and what we're able to make in-house. Now, if I wanted just a regular Old Fashioned or Manhattan, I could get it? Oh, absolutely. We actually do a pre-prohibition style Old Fashioned. Uh, we, the, the cherries and uh, oranges that get muddled in there came, uh, came about afterwards. Can you show us how to do it? Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Let's get Christian. to it. So the first thing we're going to get is our mixing glass here. Uh, take one sugar cube. And what I do here, I just put a couple drops of water on here. This helps that sugar cube break down. Then we do four dashes of cherry bitters. I like that idea. Rather than muddling a cherry, you have the cherry bitters. Exactly, and then the orange bitters, and you get all those same flavors without adding the fruit in there. See, that sugar cube just breaks right down. That water did help. I, it's it's incredible, cool. right? Great secret to know. And this really is the traditional because uh, I know a lot of people, you can cut corners and use simple syrup, but this it, is the real this deal. This is the way muddling to do it, it right down. here. I'm going to take uh, two ounces of Woodford Reserve here. Beautiful. Now all you need is a few ice cubes and a couple dozen stirs. So 10 or 20 is usually what I go for. Just, just add it. ice. And I love, I love the cubes you're using too, Christian. Uh, try not to dilute it down quite as quickly. Perfect. You know by touch. I know by touch, exactly. <laughs> I, when, when you can feel that glass getting just a little cold, you know it's ready. The fine julep strainer right into a uh, glass with those nice ice cubes. It's topped off with a thick wedge of orange peel. That looks absolutely fabulous. Christian, do you mind if I uh, try your Give work? it a taste and let me know what you I'll think. I'll tell you what, that is great. And already you can smell the zest from the orange absolutely. that comes up. It's just beautiful. Yeah, I usually All throw right. that down in there. And look. So here we go, cheers. Cheers. Wow, Christian, that is fantastic. Phenomenal. I'll tell you what, this is why it's the number one seller. Absolutely. You're doing it right. I appreciate it. Thank you, Christian. Yeah, absolutely. It's delicious. They're full of fine bourbons here, but also you can get full on fine food as well. It's delicious. Fried oysters with carpaccio. And they are to die for. 
succulent short rib tacos. The short rib tacos are so tender. And they do chicken and waffles like nobody else. I got to go back into OBC's kitchen to get the secrets to that from executive chef Matt Combs. Can't get any more southern than chicken and waffles, but this is not your grandmother's chicken and waffles, is it? No, this isn't. We actually, we kind of dress it up a little bit by doing a cornmeal waffle with cheddar cheese and chives. The cornmeal, the flour, and then all the leavening agent in one. Nice fluffy waffles, you gotta make sure that you don't mix it ahead of time. So then with the, the egg and the buttermilk that we add to that, we're just gonna mix that through until we get a nice smooth consistency. The great part about it is we spike it with uh, vanilla bourbon sorghum to add some sweetness and then a, hot, then a hot pepper honey to top it off. Savory, sweet, bourbon, you got it all in this one waffle. Indeed. Now it's time for the chicken, so what do we have going on here? So we use uh, breast meat for the chicken. We also do a buttermilk brine on those, and then a seasoned flour. Uh, we're going to bread those, deep fry till they're golden crisp. There we go, and that's just gonna fry for probably about four to five minutes. We cut on nice thin cutlets. All right, Chef, looks like the waffle is ready to go. The waffle's ready to come out, so we're just gonna go ahead and, and break it loose from the iron there. Perfect. So we got a nice golden waffle. It's all about presentation in OBC. A good tower. Drizzle the plate with uh, vanilla bourbon sorghum. So we're, that's what's gonna add some of the sweetness to this dish. Around the plate, we're gonna do uh, some southern candied pecans. Beautiful, another crunch factor. Another crunch factor. Uh, here's one of the, the keys to it, a spiked uh, hot chili honey. So it's got hot chili, a little honey in there, yep. heat and sweet. Heat and sweet. For garnish, we got some pickled peppers that we're just going to dress around the plate. We got some crisp leeks that we're just going to place on the top. And since we have chives in the cornmeal chive waffle, we're just going to a couple fresh chives there on the plate. And that's our finished dish. Now that is absolutely gorgeous. That is definitely not your grandmother's uh, chicken and waffles, is it? I don't know. Not the grandma's. <laughs> no, this is something brand new. I love this. A big dish like this, you actually serve it with one of your steak knives. Indeed. Yeah, I, I think it's needed because I was just going to go in. You said knock it down. Just I'm going in right on top. You get a little punch from that bourbon that's in the sorghum, mm -hmm. heavy on the vanilla. Mm -hmm. You got savory, sweet, heat. Mm -hmm. You got the umami. This, mm -hmm. I mean, this is a complete dish. Very unique. I've never had chicken and waffles like this. And I'll tell you what, people really must love this dish. Waffles are delicious. This is unbelievable. Much better than my grandmother's. The sorghum, the vanilla bourbon, the uh, cheddar and chives and the waffle, just incredible. It tastes like a cheddar biscuit and it's just delightful. That is incredible. Again, not your grandmother's chicken and waffles. Something brand new from Chef Matt Combs right here at the OBC Kitchen. The presentation is second to none, and the ambiance is incredible. Great place overall, OBC Kitchen. Thanks to everyone here at OBC Kitchen for having us, and to Kevin Harned and the gang at DECA for taking us behind the scenes there. That'll do it for this edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Tim Laird, and we'll see you next time.